Greetings family, this is Jamila from Love Mila. I just wanted to come on because I was on YouTube and I found that the curated Curvy, I'll link her below, um, but she came out with a sewing edition of this or that that I thought was so cute and such a good insight to how people sew that I just wanted to jump on and do my own version in case anyone was wondering or in case not, I don't know, but I just thought it was cute. Um, I know I'm a little late to this, so I was kind of was back and forth and hesitant about whether I was going to do it or not, but I'm going to just go ahead and do it. So I just want to thank my current subscribers for coming back. Thank you for your support. And if I have any new subscribers, welcome, welcome. My name is Jamila, and this is Love Mila. So I'm going to be reading from my laptop um, the number of questions that she has posed to the sewist. Um, these questions came from a podcast called Love to Sew, and the first topic is about sewing prep. Now, the first question is, do I like shopping new or stash busting? I like to shop new. I have so many fabrics on, back here that are new. Um, I really do like to stash bust, but... I think I'm kind of like everyone that, well, I am intend, I have well intentions to go into my stash. And right now, that's where my focus is. But I also have some new initiatives that require me to purchase more, like made to order things. So um, I can't always bust my stash, even though I would really like to do that. Um, the next one is PDF versus paper patterns. I am actually cutting out a PDF pattern right now. But it's a child's pattern, very few sheets, because I do not like, I like the instant gratification of PDFs, yes, but I do not like all the printing, the cost of ink, cutting, pasting, or um, taping, all of that. And then the storage is worse. I have a nice storage system for my, uh, my tissue paper patterns, I should say, because they're both paper, but my tissue paper patterns. Um, and I just rather keep it that way. It's just so much easier to cut. So, yeah, I like my envelopes. Um, three, cutting versus versus tracing. Um, I do both. In fact, I have a short video on tracing and the reasons to trace. So I would rather cut. I think everybody would rather cut. But I've come into times where I cut and I lost the pattern, or the pattern wasn't um, in print anymore, and I couldn't find it anywhere, or it was just like a high price when you found it in third party areas, and I was like, dang, I should have traced it. And so with high um, volume, or like high use, I do rather trace it. Or for my son's stuff, well, I know that he's gonna grow. I don't wanna keep buying the same pattern, even if it's on sale, at Joann's, it still may not be available all the time. Uh, it always may not be on sale. So let me just trace it real quick and then I'll just have it forever. So I'll, I do kind of do both. Um, four, muslin or just go for it? I say muslin. And I, and I think people who say muslins have messed up fashion fabric. And that is me. <laughs> I have cut into some things, especially early on, so many times where um, I wasn't taught to make a muslin. I was just like, okay, let me buy some fabric, buy my pattern, and go for it. Then I, and I'm just sewing. And at the end of the day, it just did not fit or didn't fit well. And I'm a person that hates making alterations after I've sewn something up or have to get a seam ripper when everything is done and redo things. And it's just, it's a mess for me. Some people love alterations. I am not one of those people. So um, I would rather make a muslin first. I think muslins are very easy. I don't think that they're very time consuming, especially you use a basing stitch, you just do the front or back, um, and it just saves you. Sometimes you think that things are gonna fit and oh, I make this size all the time. And so I would definitely make a muslin, especially if it's expensive fabric. Okay, topic number two about fabric let's see in store versus online shopping i am an in-store shopper um i'm still learning 
a lot about fabrics. Um, and then most of the time, most of the issue I have with online um, shopping is just the color way, um, the pictures, and then what it looks like in real life. Sometimes I do a lot of color blocking, so I need certain, um, so I'm matching, you know, what I already have, or I'm matching two things online, and I just need them to look right. And so when you order them, you get them, and then they're, they're kind of off. Um, I would prefer not to do that and just go go in the store and, and get it if available. Um, number two, knits versus wovens. I love wovens. It's, they're so much easier to work with to me. So much easier to work with. Um, I do like to wear knits though um, because they're comfortable, but just in sewing terms, I love a woven. Give me a good woven. Um, tumble dry versus hang to dry. Um, I do both, but I prefer hang to dry. I, I don't wash my handcrafted clothes with my regular clothes. I just don't um, because I just care for my handcrafted clothes a lot better because I know the time and effort that I've taken to make them. And so um, I have shrunk fabric before and I just rather not. To me, it doesn't take anything to just put my, you know, shirts and pants on a hanger and then hang it up right next to my dryer. So um, I'm pretty much not going to wear them the next day, so it doesn't even matter. And then rotary cutters versus scissors. Okay, so I have all of it, right? So um, I do use these rotary cutters more often. So for what, right? I like to use rotary cutters for my pattern cutting, my tissue paper cutting. Um, they're super quick, easy. I use these only for that tissue paper. Now this, these are for my fabric. However, I don't care for them so much. Um, the handle and everything is fine. It's just the blades wear out so quick. Um, I put a new blade in and it was, it was still rolling kind of funky. So it could just be this. It could be my installation. I don't know. But the cost of buying blades, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm over that. Um, I really do love these scissors because they have, you know, the flat edge at the bottom. So it really helps that the fabric and um, paper aren't lifting up so much. Um, so I really do prefer, and they're super sharp, and I really do prefer to cut with these now. I'm glad I found them. And then, of course, which I haven't really seen anyone talk about so much, my e-scissors. Look. Listen, these are great. I prefer these over anything. The only issue with these, so everything has this like, you know, pros and cons. The only issue with this is that um, to I'm not great at little cuts or, um, you know, like intricate cuts with these. These are really good for your wider designs, um, like big, big um, pieces like big fronts backs of pants where you have like long straight edges things like that these are great super fast and they go through multiple layers if you're making like a batch order or anything like that so these e-scissors are probably that's the third category that's that okay topic three is clothing construction follow the pattern or wing it now, thankfully, I'm at the point where I can just wing it, but of course, it depends on the design. If it's something that I've seen a million times that I pretty much know how to construct it, I'll just construct it on my own. Um, there's certain things, uh, and I explained in previous videos, like doing a pattern review, where I don't like the, um, like for instance, I don't like the set in sleeve method. I like the flat um, sleeve method. Um, so I usually do that myself. With um, however, when there's a new design or new feature that I'm not super familiar, familiar with, I will go ahead and go according to the pattern instructions. And that's because sometimes I think that I'll be doing it how I want to do it. And then I'll forget a piece or I'll forget like, oh, I should have cut this way if I wanted to do it that way. And I'm messing myself up because at the end, there was a reason why you should have done it. The way that the pattern says it for the most part i'm i'm not making things super complicated now i do like to try some new things and then i will go like step by step with the pattern instructions or see if there's a um video that goes 
with it because a lot of people who make videos, so long videos, they don't necessarily go according to the pattern instructions. Even the pattern designer does not do that. So, um, let's see what's next. Bias tape finish versus facings. I like facings. I like facings. <laughs> Um, if I have the fabric to use for a facing, I don't make my own bias tape. So I don't want to keep buying bias tape and then it's a little bit tedious. And then all the ironing or pressing, it's just easier to me to cut a facing. It fits fine. You know, I don't, I just feel like that's easier. Um, main thing I don't care for with bias tape is that you'll still see a, a, um, a line outside. Is that true? Yes, yes. So there'll still be like a top stitching line, basically. And so for certain projects, you don't want that top stitching line. Or, you know, you don't want that to be seen. Let's see. Three serge seams or French seams? I don't think I've ever done a French seam. <laughs> I, it's, it's something I could probably learn to do, I'm sure. There's so many different types of seams. Hong Kong, you know, like all those different types of things. Um, at this moment in my life, I don't need to have any type of special seams unless I'm doing like a fancy dress with like fancy fabric, which I'm not doing right now, but uh, perhaps I will, I will do it in the future. But my serger, I bought that with good money and it finishes things very well and the finish for the serger is just quick and so I'm good with my serge seams. Number four, button fly versus zip fly. I don't do a lot of flies, um, but I assume a button fly will be easier than a, than a zip fly. I don't know. I don't do flies, so I can't really, can't really talk on that. Uh, number five, button by hand versus sewing machine. It depends on the number of buttons. If it is, um, I'll say more than four or five buttons, more than four buttons, I'm going to use my machine. And I remember commenting on someone's video when they said like they were breaking a bunch of needles with their uh, sewing machine doing buttons with the machine. And I suggested that you use the hand wheel manually. It's not perfect though. It's not always perfect. Sometimes it's really hard to get the button exactly where you want it. So that's why if it's less than four, I will go ahead and use my hand my, to sew on those buttons. It doesn't take a lot of time. Um, a lot of people, not everybody who machine sews knows how to hand sew. I do know how to hand sew, and it's not a big deal to me. Um, fusible versus sewing interfacing. Fusible interfacing all day. Yeah, no. Use that, that press, that pressing iron, and do fusible interfacing. Snip as you go or all at once? Snip as you go. Even when you snip as you go, there still might be a thread here or there, and I don't like that. If you do it all at once, to me, it's just messy. It's just so messy. When I am done with the project, I want to be done. I don't want to have to go through and do anything else. The last one in this topic is press as you go or all at once. I feel like you pretty much have to press as you go and because um, there are certain seams that you have to make first, and then if you put those pieces together in a different way, then um, you don't have access to the full length of that seam anymore because you've connected it with something else. So I feel like you have to press at one, um, as you go in order to have full access to all of the, the seam. Okay, so late night seamstress versus daytime seamstress. It would behoove me to be a late night seamstress because there's a lot going on. I have a toddler, things like that during the day. However, I am just not a night person at all. I don't know. After a certain time, I'm just like, I don't know. I can't have a lot. I don't have a lot of executive function. So whatever I do do at night, it has to be super basic or else I'll be seen ripping and it's just a waste of time at that point. So what I will do at night it's not so, but I will cut at night. Maybe not fabric because to me that's 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 a daytime function that I need. 
um, because I don't like to cut anything wrong either. But mm-hmm. with the tissue paper or anything like that, I will cut at night. I will like batch cut at night doing some prep. But I am a person that will get up very early in the morning, like five in the morning and go ahead and, and start on a project because I just feel like for me, that's when my brain is fresher and that's before my son will wake up with fingers crossed. Okay, two more. We have slow and steady versus frantic sewing. I am a frantic s- sewer. <laughs> I'm like an event sewer. I get ideas when I'm about to go somewhere or I have an event. And I'm like, oh, I should sew something for that. And even though I might know ahead of time, I I don't know. I'm just like, okay, I think I have time for this. I think I have time for that. But then I just change my mind so easily at the end. And I'm just like, oh, I got to get this done for, you know, this party Thursday. And I'm just frantic sewing. So unfortunately, that's me. And then three, tidy as you go or one big cleaning session. I am a one big cleaning session type person. That's not good. But I will say before another project, I do like to tidy up. So it's not it's not too much at a time because usually that one project, that one shirt doesn't have, you know, too much going on. The good thing is that I have my own sewing space, like my own sewing room, so I don't have to tidy up for anyone else in the family. Otherwise, if it was a shared space, I will tidy as I go. Um, yeah, and so that is it. When it comes to uh, the, the this or that, I hope you all learned a little bit more about me and my sewing style. Thank you again for clicking on this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I will see you later. Bye.